were a direct consequence of Warren's illegal activity were repeated spells behind bars. He's now 59 years old. He's earned an estimated £200 million fortune and he's now released from prison once again. He was known as Britain's Pablo Escobar. Having made links with Colombian drug lords who could guarantee best supply of cocaine into Britain. Drug kingpin Curtis Warren will be allowed to resettle in Liverpool where he ran his £200 million cocaine empire so as not to violate his human rights. The 59-year-old gangster was freed from high security prison, HMP Whitemore, having been sentenced to 13 years in 2009 for a multi-million pound cannabis smuggling plot. He will face a host of strict measures, including being banned from using WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and from using cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin. Warren will also have to give a day's notice ahead of his usual day-to-day activities, such as being a passenger of someone else's car or van. However, he is free to head back to his home city, where police fear he may return to galvanise the region's criminal underworld. The gangster is rumoured to have millions of pounds sealed in bags and buried under gardens all over Liverpool. He has homes all over the world, including a 16-room mansion in the Netherlands and a winery in Bulgaria but a source at the National Crime Agency said the decision to let him relocate to Merseyside was to stop the matter being dragged through the courts in Strasbourg. Warren also owned a home in West Kirby, Merseyside, although its current status is unclear. The source from the National Crime Agency added preventing him from entering Liverpool was regarded as a possible human rights violation. Warren is unlikely to be supervised in Liverpool by probation services because he served his sentence in full or he will be subject of a serious crime prevention order which will restrict his ability to do everyday tasks. He will also be watched by the National Crime Agency's lifetime management team who are in charge of upholding the crime prevention order for the next five years. Warren will not have a curfew and can apply for a British passport. He can also have a mobile phone, although in a bid to prevent any suspicious activity, he can only use one SIM card and one phone number. It is also understood he cannot hold more than £1,000 in cash, even in coins, and he will be closely watched when trying to borrow money, hold trusts or shares or make transfers. Warren is rumoured to have hidden some of his vast wealth in plastic bags all over Liverpool. In 1998, £1,000,000 in cash was dug up from the flower bed of a garden of a drug dealer and Warren's mentor, Philip Glennon. But paper £20 and £50 notes ceased to be legal tender in September this year, whilst the paper £10 note was withdrawn from circulation in March 2018. It means that, for it to be usable now, Warren's money would need to be taken to a bank in exchange for the plastic polymer notes that replace the paper ones, unless an associate has already exchanged their hidden money for legal cash. At one point, Curtis Warren was so wealthy that he featured on Sunday Times Rich List, Back then in 1997, Warren's riches estimated to be that of £40 million were said to be that the result of a property portfolio and put him at number 481 among Britain's wealthiest. But he wasn't a legitimate businessman. He was instead the man who had smuggled so many drugs into the UK that he was known as Britain's Pablo Escobar. Having made links with Colombian drug lords who could guarantee best supply of cocaine into Britain Curtis Cocky Warren built an empire that nested in more vast riches and notoriety. But a direct consequence of Warren's illegal activity were repeated spells behind bars. He's now 59 years old. He's earned an estimated £200 million fortune and he's now released from prison once again. He'd been jailed in 2009 over dastardly plans to smuggle £1 million of cannabis into Jersey. It was noted how he was believed to have drug-producing contacts in countries including Iran, Morocco, South and Central America, Ghana, Thailand and Australia. And now he has walked free, the man dubbed a big scarce git in a shell suit, who once worked as a club bouncer in his home city of Liverpool, but has spent nearly half his life on the wrong side of the prison walls, with the latest stint amounting to nearly 20 years. Warren once boasted that he could spend £50,000 a day and he would still not go broke. 
He was born in Liverpool in 1963. He was the second son of Curtis Warren, a black seaman with the Norwegian Merchant Navy. His mother, Sylvia Chantry, was the daughter of a shipyard boiler attendant. The gangster was aged just 12 when he dropped out of school and launched his criminal career. His first brush with police came when he was caught driving a stolen car, even though he was still barely old enough to see over the wheel. In 1978, the then 15 year old was sentenced to three months in a detention centre and at 18, he was sent to Borstal for assaulting police officers. Then in 1981, when he was 20, Warren was sent to prison for two years for attacking a prostitute and a client. The judge told him that only his youth saved him from a longer sentence. When he was released, Warren worked as a bouncer for Liverpool clubs and then started a business that organised Dorman. Now with the benefit of controlling access to many of the venues, by the time he was 22, Warren was reported to be selling cannabis in Exeter. The next prison sentence came in 1983, five year term for armed robbery. But Warren's path to becoming synonymous with Escobar, a man who became known as the King of Cocaine in his role as head of the Medellin Cartel, began in the late 1980s, when he teamed up with Brian Charrington and headed to Venezuela. The men arranged to import cocaine sealed inside lead ingots, making it difficult for the authorities to detect by X-ray. In 1993, a drugs trial that Warren was embroiled in collapsed. Warren reportedly told customs officers, I'm going off to spend my £87 million from the first shipment and you can't touch it. In 1995, Warren moved to Holland where he continued his cocaine smuggling enterprise. But now he was sending the drugs to Bulgaria where he bought a share of a winery. Once it was there, Warren's grand plan involved suspending the cocaine in red wine and then shipping it to Liverpool and freeing it from the liquid. But in 1996, the Dutch police intercepted 400 kilos of cocaine that had been cased in lead and was bound for Bulgaria. They'd been listening to his phone calls. At other addresses controlled by the Liverpoolian, they found 1,500 kilos of cannabis resin, 60 kilos of heroin and 50 kilos of ecstasy. There was also CS gas, pepper spray, gas canisters, three guns, ammunition and 400,000 Dutch guilders. The whole haul of illicit goods was said to be worth £125 million. Warren was sentenced to 12 years in prison and then was given further four years being convicted of killing another prisoner following a fight in an excise yard in 1999. After serving two thirds of his sentence, 10 years and eight months in total, Warren was released in the summer of 2007. His first act was to return to Britain and visit his elderly mother. Two years later, Warren was convicted of a crime that would keep him behind bars until recently. He was jailed for 13 years over a plot to smuggle one million pound of cannabis into Jersey. He and five others planned to flood the Channel Island streets with huge quantities of the drug. Warren's gang aimed to buy 180 kilograms of cannabis in Amsterdam and then take it by car to the coast of Normandy, where it would be put onto a boat to Jersey. In Jersey, the street value of the drug there is three times higher than the UK. Unbeknown to Warren, he was being trailed by Jersey police and a serious organised crime agency. At the time, he also failed to pay a £198 million confiscation order. The National Crime Agency have claimed that Warren also invested £4 million in gold mining ventures along with more money in petrol stations and homes in numerous countries. In an article in 2013, Warren tried to claim he was anti-drugs. He said it's just not good. Bloody hell, I've never had a cigarette in my life or a drink. I've never tasted alcohol or anything. The gangster did not feel sorry for the people he had left hooked on the likes of heroin. Instead, he was more worried about his mother's feelings. Referring to his 1979 conviction for cracking a woman's skull with a shotgun during an armed robbery, he said for my mother to read that, it was not nice stuff. It's like the last time I was arrested in Holland, they said I was in bed with a prostitute. It's not true, as I told my girlfriend at the time. 